गाइज वेलकम बैक टू ए टू जेड डेंटिस्ट्री अ चैनल विच फीचर्स डेंटल लेक्चर्स नमोनिक्स एग्जाम टिप्स एंड ईजी एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ वेरियस टॉपिक्स रिलेटेड टू डेंटिस्ट्री सो अवर टूडे इस टॉपिक इज टैलेंस का सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर डू लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो टूडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट टैलेंस कस्प अंडर द फॉलोइंग सब हेड्स डेफिनेशन पैथोजेनेसिस क्लिनिकल फीचर्स रेडियोलॉजिकल फीचर्स डायग्नोसिस ट्रीटमेंट and differential diagnosis so before moving to the definition let's first try to understand what this terminology basically refers to right so basically talon means an eagle's talon here so i have put up a picture here right or uh, there are two pictures which are nothing but the claws of the eagle can you see the projection the nails Uh, which are on the toes right so these kind of nails are referred to as talon and eagle's talon and as this dental anomaly resembles the eagle's talon hence it is named as talon's cusp meaning something which resembles like an eagle's talon so now that we have got a brief understanding about what this terminology basically means so now let's jump into the definition so by definition the talon cusp is an anomalous structure which resembles an eagle's talon that projects lingually from the cingulum areas of maxillary or mandibular permanent incisor now as previously mentioned this structure deeply resembles the eagle's talon and this particular anomaly will originate from the cingulum area as we know that the cingulum area is a prominent bulge found on the lingual aspect of anterior teeth so from this cingulum area a structure resembling an eagle's talon is something which we can find clinically so this anomaly is seen in maxillary or mandibular permanent incisor okay so basically it is an anomalous hyperplasia of the cingulum of lingual surface of maxillary and mandibular incisors right so as we know that our tooth uh, develops from repeated uh, differentiation of various cells uh, particularly amyloblast during the enamelogenesis phase now what happens is that sometimes there is an hyperactivity of the cells in the cingulum area right there is an hyperplasia in that particular area on the lingual surface which leads to such kind of projection now this projection is also referred to as supernumerary cusp in some texts now why because uh, this structure resembles somewhat remotely like a cusp also so it has been put as a type of supernumerary cusp in various texts so as far as a uh, knowledge point of view is concerned what we need to particular remember here is that it is basically an kind of dental anomaly which occurs due to hyperplasia in the cingulum area and which resembles an eagle's talon right and it projects lingually from the cingulum area of maxillary and mandibular incisors so at the bottom of the slide i have put up two pictures right now both these pictures are of talon's cusp in the first picture the clinician is holding the talon's cusp with the help of an explorer as we can see that uh, there is a structure which is clearly resembling the eagle's talon and it is projecting from the singular area of the maxillary incisor tooth and in the second picture we can see that there is a projection right which is coming off the cingulum area of the tooth and it is merging towards the incisal edge okay so this is also an example of talon's cusp in the mandibular arch now i hope that you know how the clinical appearance of talon's cusp is like so next time when you encounter such a dental anomaly you know that what you are looking at is nothing but talon's cusp moving on towards the pathogenesis so the pathogenesis here is implicated because of two major causes the first one is the focal proliferation and the next is the exuberant development now what focal proliferation basically means is that in a localized area there will be excessive proliferation as well as differentiation of the tissues leading to such an anomaly as we know that it is nothing but the hyperplasia of the cells particularly in the cingulum area so focal hyperactivity of the cells may give rise to talon's cusp 
so the another cause which is mentioned in various texts is the exuberant development now as we know that the cingulum develops from three lobes in some cases it might happen that there are four lobes present in such case obviously there would be a hyperplasia in the cingulum area now this hyperplasia has been referred to as here exuberant development why because not three but there are four lobes present now because of this excessive lobe which is there there is development of the talons cusp moving on towards the clinical features so there is no gender predilection and the ratio is 1 is to 1 it occurs equally in both the sexes coming to the location as we have already previously specified that this particular dental anomaly is located and is present only in the maxillary and mandibular incisor teeth so obviously the site and location here it is most commonly associated with maxillary central incisor as well as lateral incisor okay now it can happen in both the dentitions in deciduous dentition as well as in permanent dentition coming to the appearance so basically clinically we will see that there is a structure which is very closely resembling the eagle's talon now the clinical picture here would be you know uh, excessive cusp like growth right which is emerging from the cingulum area of the maxillary or mandibular incisors which is blending very smoothly with the erupted tooth except from the area right where there is a deep developmental groove where the cusp will blend with the sloping of the lingual tooth surface now what happens is that we know that there is an exuberant development and it might happen that not three but there are four lobes involved in development of the talons cusp so because of this there is a deep developmental groove present in this anomaly and only at this particular point the cusp will blend smoothly with the sloping lingual surface of the tooth and not particularly you know uniformly with wall of the lingual surface per se right but except of the area where this developmental groove is present at the other areas it will appear to be very smoothly blended with the lingual surface of the tooth and it will extend till the incisor edge of the tooth in most of the cases moving on towards the composition of the talons cusp it is composed of normal enamel dentine and it may contain a horn of the pulp tissue so as we have seen that the development of the talons cusp is because of either focal proliferation or because of exuberant development so what the three elements which basically form our tooth will also be present in the talons cusp so basically it is formed of enamel dentine and it will contain horn of pulp tissue that also means that this talons cusp is vital and any uh, kind of you know damage or trauma might cause pain to the patient coming to the shape the cusp may or may not contain a pulp horn right and it is usually a t-shaped structure in the first picture i have put up you know you can see that the talons cusp is resembling what a t-shape so this is how the clinical picture of talons cusp look like now here as we know that this is a vital structure pulp horn being present inside the talons cusp so during treatment we have to be careful of this fact and accordingly plan our treatment moving on to the significance of this dental anomaly so as we know that this particular anomaly is largely related to the anterior teeth incisors particularly so patient can have problem with the aesthetics here also there is high incidence of caries and it might lead to certain occlusal interferences also as at the point of deep developmental groove it will not blend smoothly with the lingual surface as we have discussed previously and also because a groove itself is present here it might predispose to the development of caries and occlusal interferences can also be there if the shape of the talon is very irregular now coming to the syndrome with which this anomaly is associated so it is associated with rubinstein tabby syndrome 
as well as sturge weber syndrome you have to remember this it might be asked as an mcq question so only two syndromes which are synonymous with talens cusp the first one is rubinstein stabe syndrome and the second one is sturge weber syndrome moving on towards the radiographical features now basically in our iopa we will see that this particular structure is superimposed with the incisor that is because it is emerging from the lingual surface of incisors so obviously it would appear as an superimposed anomaly here coming to the appearance the outline is very smooth right and a layer of normal appearing enamel is distinguishable as we know that the talens cusp is derived from enamel dentin and it contains a horn of pulp as well so radiographically we will be able to appreciate a layer of enamel so based on radiograph also we can have a diagnosis of talens cusp if we find that there is a projection on the lingual surface of incisors which is emerging from the cingulum area the outline of which appears very smooth and a layer of normal appearing enamel is present definitely we can say that this particular iopa belongs to a patient with talens cusp so below the slides i have put up two radiographical images so in the first picture we can clearly see that there is somewhat a t shaped structure which is emerging from the cingulum area of the tooth right and it appears to be smoothly blended with the lingual surface of our incisor now that is our talens cusp in the next picture we can clearly appreciate the outline okay which appears to be smooth and which has a resemblance of enamel that is it is appearing radio opaque here so that is the outline of our talens cusp now let's move on to the diagnosis part what if a patient refers to you with such a finding and how can you diagnose this particular condition clinically so first of all it is very easy to diagnose such condition clinically because of its characteristic shape so clinical diagnosis here is based on the clinical appearance of the talens cusp it appears as a t shaped elevation on the tooth right in the first picture you can see that in the lateral incisor there is a t shaped elevation which is emerging from the cingulum area that is our talens cusp in the next picture we are seeing bilateral talens cusp both in the central incisors of our maxillary arch right these are also appearing as t shaped structures so clinically we can easily differentiate talens cusp from other dental anomalies moving on towards the differential diagnosis so our first differential diagnosis would definitely be a supernumerate teeth why because we know that mesodents is the most common type of supernumerate teeth which is present and this mesodents is located between two central incisors two maxillary central incisors so and our talens cusp also is located within the maxillary incisor itself so radiographically we can differentiate between these two anomalies so radiographically by means of clark's technique we can differentiate whether the given anomaly is mesodens or our talens cusp moving on towards the management part so our first treatment would definitely be certain prophylactic and preventive measures as we have discussed previously that there is a deep developmental groove present right and this developmental groove can serve as a niche for bacteria to proliferate and cause caries in the future so we need to have a prophylactic restoration of the deep developmental groove done here so that we can avoid the incidence of caries in such patients as we know that there is a high incidence of caries in this dental anomaly the next treatment is that of endodontic uh, treatment now why because what if the caries has already been initiated and it has destroyed the tooth structure in that case definitely we would have to undertake an endodontic therapy now that involves removal of the cusp followed by our standard endodontic treatment that is we can go for our root canal treatment 
and if at all it is related to our decidus dentition that we then we can also undertake pulpectomies here our aim definitely would be to conserve the tooth structure if the patient reports earlier to us then definitely we will have the prophylactic restoration of the deep developmental groove also we need to counsel the patient regarding this anomaly and ask them to tediously maintain the oral hygiene to avoid any caries incidence here so some of the other modalities of treatment include periodic grinding now this periodic grinding is particularly done in order for you maintenance of the vitality of the tooth now after grinding we know that we have removed a layer of enamel and now we have opened up the dentinal tubules which are very sensitive to thermal changes right and other changes also so therefore a layer of desensitizing agent particularly fluoride varnish needs to be coated here so that the dentinal tubules are sealed off and the patient does not get dentinal hypersensitivity now there are certain other modalities of treatment right these include sealing of the susceptible grooves and fissures as we have de discussed previously and we can either uh, opt for resin crowns right and in worst cases we will have to undergo extraction with that particular tooth because in many of the cases the endodontic treatment is complicated because of the complex structure of the tooth itself right so in such cases uh, extraction is the only therapy which remains but do remember that extraction would be the last choice of treatment if at all we cannot save the tooth only then we will undergo with extraction otherwise we will go with our prophylactic treatment as well as our conservative and endodontic treatment so moving on towards our last section right that is the exam tip now the first exam tip would be that write the answer very clearly write the answer as i have mentioned in this slides starting with the definition pathogenesis clinical features diagnosis treatment planning and try to mention at least two differential diagnoses as we have discussed regarding the mesodent supernumerary tooth so definitely you can write both of them as differential diagnosis right and another would be if you can't remember anything just remember the talon of the eagle i have put up the picture here right so the moment you pictureize this you can write at least two to three points about that first one would be it appears as t-shaped then you can also remember that it is projecting from the cingulum of maxillary or mandibular teeth apart from it definitely you can improve your answer by drawing diagram and it is very easy you just need to draw our dental arch as we draw routinely and draw two shape uh, two t shaped structure on the cingulum side of the tooth right you can either draw it for maxillary arch or for the mandibular arch both will serve the purpose rightly so i hope that you understood this video you understood this topic very well I'll see you next time with a new topic till then bye bye take care